Today we'll be using Excel for location-based scheduling. In a previous video, we discussed the foundations of location-based scheduling and line of balance or LOB for repetitive project activities. The link to that video can be found in the description below. Now we want to use Excel for our scheduling problem. We'll work on a dynamic template for a railway construction project, introduce two rules of thumb for finding optimum activity buffers, and use scatter plots in Excel for line balancing. You can follow along by getting the Excel workbook via the provided link in the description below. Let's focus on planning a railway project with six activities for which a minimum buffer of four weeks is required between activities to prevent time clashes and also site congestion. We can follow only four simple steps in Excel to perform location-based scheduling for our example based on the project management body of knowledge or PMBOK. Step one is to calculate activity durations based on their production rate. Let's start by analyzing the provided spreadsheet, accounting for six activities in a railway construction project with a total length of 300 kilometers. The first activity of surveying and site preparation has a production rate of 34 kilometers per week. We can find its duration by clicking on the relevant cell and pressing the equal sign. Then select the total length of 300 kilometers and divide it by the production rate of 34 kilometers per week to find the duration of almost nine weeks for the activity. Please note that the numbers are rounded up and we can follow the same procedure to find durations of the remaining activities. The durations in weeks are 20, 15, 30, 43, and 20 weeks. Now we have concluded the first step in performing the linear scheduling method or LSM using Excel. Step 2 is to decide on optimum buffers between activities and calculate the start and end dates. The aim of scheduling our railway project is to maintain a minimum buffer of four weeks between activities, and for that we'll be using two rules of thumb, also known as Johnson's algorithm. The first rule is related to any pair of activities in which the successor has a slower production rate than its predecessor, and the buffer must be placed between start dates. For example, consider first activity of surveying and site preparation, and second activity of excavation and earthworks. Since the second activity is slower, starting it at week 4 guarantees that there is no clash with the first activity. Considering activity durations, the finish date for surveying and site preparation will be week 9, and for second activity of excavation and earthworks will be week 24. The second rule in our scheduling considers pairs of activities in which the successor has a faster production rate than its predecessor, and the buffer must be placed between finish dates. For example, consider the second activity of excavation and earthworks, and third activity of laying subgrade. Since the third activity is faster, considering the buffer of four weeks at finish guarantees that there is no clash with the second activity. This means laying subgrade is scheduled to finish at week 28, and considering its duration of 15 weeks, the start date will be at week 13. Following the two rules of thumb will help us to decide on optimum buffers between activities and calculate their start and finish dates. This concludes the second step in performing location-based scheduling, or LBS, using Excel. Step 3 is to specify start and end location of activities. You might have noticed that LBS is very suitable for projects with a strong spatial component, such as construction or infrastructure projects. To draw professional flow lines for our activities, we'll need to specify the start location. Also, the finish location should be specified considering the total length of the project, which is 300 kilometers. This concludes the third step in performing location-based scheduling, or LBS, using Excel. Step 4 is to plot the location-based schedule using a scatter chart. Select a cell in the spreadsheet and navigate to the Insert menu. From the Charts tab, click on a scatter chart with the straight lines. Next, right-click on the blank chart and choose Select Data. Then we should add a new series. For series name, the first activity of surveying and site preparation is chosen. Series X values will be a start and finish dates. Series Y values will be a start and finish locations. Finally, press OK and continue the process for excavation and earthworks. Laying subgrade, track laying, electrification, and signaling and communication setup. We can enhance the chart visualization for a better appearance on professional project reports. Navigate to the Design tab in Chart Tools, and from the Quick Layout menu, select a suitable layout such as number 10. We may label the vertical axis as Activity Location, and the horizontal axis as Activity Time. The flow lines clearly show that there is no temporal or spatial clash between the activities since the optimum buffer has been maintained at all times. This concludes the fourth step in performing location-based scheduling or LBS using Excel. This scheduling method has numerous benefits, including minimization of total project time, maximizing resource utilization, and simplifying complex scheduling problems. By optimizing the buffer placement, it reduces costs, improves production flow, and enhances decision-making. 
Additionally, location-based scheduling or LBS increases efficiency by reducing waste, unnecessary delays, and inefficiencies in the project process. These benefits makes LBS a versatile and scalable technique applicable to various project scenarios. And here it is, an easy solution to location-based scheduling using only four simple steps in Microsoft Excel. Again, you can access the Excel workbook via the provided link in the description below. To watch more videos like this, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one.